Good afternoon. Hey, hey. All right, a couple things for, for you all at the top, and then we'll get going. So in an hour, President Biden will meet with leaders of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, which represents 22,000 workers of at, at West Coast Ports, and the Pacific Maritime Association, which, which represents shipping companies. The President will congratulate them on finalizing a new contract which was ratified with overwhelming support from union members. He will also recognize the work of Acting Labor Secretary Julie Su, who helped reach an agreement. The contract covers 29 ports, including the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, which handles 40% of our nation's cargo containers. It guarantees a 32% pay increase over six years. The President will also discuss his administration's pro progress strengthening America's ports and supply chains. Thanks in part to the work of the President's Supply Chain Distribution Task Force, we've supplied, we, we've seen supply chains on Snarl. Our ports moved record cargo levels over the last two years. We have overcome the massive supply chain problems that increased prices around the world, and east-west ocean shipping prices have plunged nearly 90 percent. That's all helped lower inflation. And thanks to Binomics, we are working our infrastructure and supply chains even stronger. The bipartisan infrastructure legislation law, or I should say law, is making significant investments to modernize our ports. The Ocean Shipping Reform Act is cracking down on foreign shipping companies to lower prices for goods. And the CHIPS Act and Inflation Reduction Act are strengthening our supply chains for things Americans use every day. Today, Russia launched a new wave of air strikes against the people of Ukraine, killing at least 16 people and wounding dozens more. These brutal Russian attacks underscore the importance of continuing to support the people of Ukraine as they defend their territory against unprovoked, unjustified Russian aggression. That's the message that the Secretary sent, Secretary Blinken, as you all know, is carrying that message with him on his trip to Ukraine today. And it's a, special, it's a message the United States is sending today by announcing a new security assistance package, which includes more ammunition for artillery and uh, high more systems, javelin and anti-armor systems as well. Tank ammunitions for Abram tanks, which will be arriving in Ukraine soon. An air defense system to help Ukraine protect its people from airstrikes like those they faced today. The Kremlin could end this war at any time by withdrawing its forces from Ukraine and stopping its brutal attacks. Until it does, the United States and our allies and our partners will stand united with Ukraine as long as it takes. 
Earlier this year, when we made our bipartisan budget agreement, we made promises to the American people, along with congressional Republicans and congressional Democrats. Unfortunately, House Republicans, unlike Senate Republicans, are considering breaking that explicit promise due to demands from extreme members of their party. Breaking this promise would inflict painful cost on the country, making troops and border patrol agents work without paychecks, hurting our economy, and undermining our ability to fight high stakes, real life crises like fentanyl and natural disasters. As part of this unity agenda, the President, uh, President Biden, is urging Congress to provide $800 million in emergency funding to fight fentanyl trafficking and counter the deadly substance being illegally imported from China. Congressional Republicans are, are on, a, on record taking, talking about the urgency of fighting fentanyl. Now is not the time to set us back. It is time to fight that and to keep their promises. We should all work together to give the DEA, the Border Patrol, and Department of Homeland Security the anti-fentanyl funding President Biden is seeking so that uh, we can save lives. Remember, real lives are at stake here. And finally, to I know folks are having uh, have this question, so I'm going to preempt the questions, hopefully. Your first question on this, the President tested negative for COVID-19 this morning. Following negative tests on Monday night and also yesterday, he is not experiencing any symptoms, which of course is a good thing. The First Lady is doing well as well, and she remains in Delaware, which is also a good thing. The CDC guidelines recommend, as I said before, as you all know, a combination of masking, testing, and monitoring for symptoms. The President is doing all that he can, of course, in consultation with, the, with his physician, and so he's keeping, uh, keeping with the CDC guide, guidelines, as you all know.